In a previous video, we demonstrated how to register a new user into the web security system using action scripting and a dialog. In this video, we will add the ability to save additional data into an existing table in the application at the same time the security data is saved. We'll start with a dialog to register a new user that has been modified to add additional controls. The dialog now has two sections. The top section has data that will be saved to a registered users table in the application. The lower section has data that will be saved to the web security system and is identical to the controls in an earlier video. If we switch to the design tab and look at the data binding, we can see how the fields are bound to the register user table. Note that the user name field in the lower security section is being saved into the registered user data as well as in security. In version 11, the recommended way to link a security record to a record in another table is to save the security username or user ID in that table. The use of a special ulink field in a web security system is discouraged as future changes will remove the field from the security system. The username for a current logged in user in the system is now available in a new function. We can exit here and we can take a look at the function which is called a5ws underscore get current user. As we can see that will get the username of a current logged in user in the web security. Once the current user is known a record in the existing table can be found by searching for a record that contains that username. In the same way if a record has been found in the existing table and the username or user ID field has a value that value can be used to find a security record. This will be examined in another video. If we go back and look at the controls in this dialog, we can see that the controls used for web security are identical to the example in the earlier video, including the hidden fields. Since most of the fields are required in this dialog, client-side validation is added to the personal data fields. If we look at the first name field, we can look at the JavaScript and see the simple JavaScript that will require the first name. If we go to the server-side events, we can look at the on dialog initialize event and we can see this is identical to the earlier example where we're getting an identifier for a new user group and populating it into the user roles field. The dialog validate event is also identical to the earlier video where we're validating only web security values. The values for the register user table use, all use client side validation so we don't need to add validation here. If we go to the after dialog event, we can see we've already added action scripting to save the data to the registered users table. If we look at the variables exposed by the action, we can see one variable that is exposed is a flag to indicate if the record was saved. This will be false if the data was not saved for some reason. We don't want to save the security data if the personal information was not saved, so we added a simple if statement. If the flag is true, we can save the security data. So we place the cursor inside the statement. We we'll go up to action scripting. We select to save web security values. We enter a name. Select the fields from the previously saved fields. Click OK. And we have now completed the configuration. So we can test the result. Go to Working Preview and we'll type in some information. In this case we'll skip the last name and notice that we have immediate validation because of the client-side validation. So we need to put in a, a name. And we will put in a password and a confirm password. When we click submit, this will save the data into the registered users table as well as in the web security, assuming all fields validate. As we can see, we have now entered a record into the registered users table, including the username for security, and the new record into the security system. In another video, we will show how to find an existing user and edit the user data and the security data.